The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning to you here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Chris Burton. Police are investigating after a possible intruder was found dead inside a home late last night in Northeast Bakersfield. BPD says officers were called to the home on University Avenue near Redlands Drive for a report of a disturbance around 11:15 p.m. Officers arrived at the home and found the person dead inside. It was not immediately clear how that person died or what led up to the incident. It also was not clear how many other people were in the home at the time or if anyone else was hurt. The investigation's ongoing. If you know anything about this incident, you're urged to call BPD at 327-7111. And now for a signature issue here at TV 17, pedestrian safety. Bakersfield police say a driver is on the run after a deadly hit and run crash in East Bakersfield on Saturday night. Officers were called to Union Avenue near East 5th Street about 945. When they arrived, they found a woman in the road suffering from major injuries. She died at the scene. Investigators say the driver sped away after the crash. Police describing the vehicle as a dark sedan. Now, if you know anything about this case, you're urged, you're encouraged to call Bakersfield Police. That number again, 327-7111. Two police officers are in the hospital and a driver on the run after a high-speed chase through central Bakersfield over the weekend. Officers reportedly spotted a stolen car on South Union Avenue just south of the 58 around 11.30 Saturday morning. They tried to pull the vehicle over, but the driver sped away, leading police on a chase. First responders tailed the suspect car to the 58 on ramp at Union Avenue when they lost control of their vehicle, slamming into a tree. BPD says the patrol car was so severely damaged that the driver was pinned in and firefighters had to come out and pull that officer from the vehicle. Both officers were rushed to a local hospital with what emergency crews called minor to moderate injuries. California Highway Patrol officers found the suspected stolen car abandoned and the driver on the run. If you know anything about this case, you're encouraged to call BPD at 327-7111 or you can send an anonymous tip by visiting bakersfieldpd.us and click submit an anonymous tip. Your time now 504 and a local lake rendered so dry by the ongoing drought you can see dead wildlife. Concerned locals are upset about the wildlife being harmed. 17's Marco Torres reports on the condition of Truxton Lake. Truxton Lake was once filled to the brim. Now, the lake is almost completely gone. I drive by this lake, which is normally very beautiful every day, and I've just been observing the wildlife suffering, and it, I just thought to myself, this isn't right. It's a crime against nature. The wildlife is suffering from this drought, too. The cranes looking for food through the cracked earth where a portion of the lake used to be. You can even see dead fish piled up and scattered across the area. The smell is strong and foul. I've never seen it like this. As you can see, there's many fish who have already died. They're all laying around, stinking up the air. The concern now is directed towards more than 50 turtles in what's left of the lake. Some have tried leaving their home, but have not been able to safely cross Truxton Avenue. There are a lot of turtles who live in this lake, and I'm worried that they're going to die. This is one of our most beautiful resources in Bakersfield, as far as I'm concerned, and um, it is no longer. We cannot enjoy it, and I just feel like Bakersfield can do better than this. McCoy hopes county and city officials will do something to help the remaining wildlife. We'll be sure to follow this story as it continues to develop. From Trucks and Lake, Marco Torres, 17 News. An update now on a story we've been following. We're learning more about a Bakersfield woman who was allegedly gunned down by her boyfriend. 37-year-old Christina Medina was shot and killed outside her home on First Street Friday night. Uh, a week ago, Friday night. Bakersfield police arrested 54-year-old Glenn Jones in connection to the killing. 17 News sat down with Medina's sister and 15-year-old daughter this week. The two opening up about the woman they call one of a kind. Well, Christine, she is um, really an amazing woman. Um, you know, she's three years older than me. She was my first best friend growing up. Um, and, you know, you can't really choose who your family are, but you can choose who your friends are. 
and um, I chose for her to stay my best friend and she chose for me to stay her best friend. And we stayed best friends throughout our entire lives. I didn't really believe it all the way, but I like believed it at the same time. I was very like, like surreal. I was just like, like she's all I have. She's my only parent. How am I gonna make it in this world without her? Nicole Medina says Christine's death comes just weeks after their mother, Patricia, died of lung cancer. A GoFundMe is set up to help provide financial aid to Christine's surviving daughter. You can find the link on our website, KGET.com. And big news this morning, the new Cracker Barrel in Central Bakersfield is opening later this morning. That's right, the classic family restaurant opens its doors at 7 a.m. I wonder if there's a line outside. I we'll would guess there probably go is. Check that we'll out. go check that out. I know there <laughs> is a lot of hype surrounding this Cracker Barrel. In fact, it's been promised for years here in Bakersfield. It has been a really long time yes. coming, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and so the nearly 9,000 square foot restaurant can sit 166 guests at a time, so plenty of room. Oh yeah. Before this one, the closest Cracker Barrel to Bakersfield was in Camarillo. Established in 1969 in Lebanon, Tennessee, Cracker Barrel operates more than 660 company-owned locations in 45 states. Bakersfield's newest fitness studio opens up this morning and the owners hope to take clients to new heights. I got the chance to check out Climb and talk to the founders, two women and friends working to build a local fitness empire. Christy Wintberg and Nicole Lazzarini opened Level Fitness in 2019. The longtime friends and fitness fanatics brought the Legree method to Bakersfield and since then have developed a sort of cult following, amassing dozens of devotees who are now part of their mega club. Now the business partners are bringing another unique workout to town with their new studio, Climb, by Level Fitness. They're always looking when we go to other cities, like what are bigger cities offering that Bakersfield doesn't have? And the Versa Climber kept coming up. And up is the theme here. As the class progresses, the machine tracks how high you climb. I hit 2,800 feet in my first class. We love these efficient workouts. We're moms, we're busy. It's 30 minutes, you're in and out, and it is a cardio blast. There's nothing like it in town. Go right, left, right, left. right when you're kind of feeling like, oh my gosh, how can I go on? You're over halfway done, and the music's bumping. It's so much fun. You're going to lose track of time. Four, three, two, one, let's go. We call the dance party. Building muscle and endurance as Christy and Nicole build their fitness empire. Both of our husbands are like, no more, we're good. And we're like, next studio, we'll know to do this. Next yeah. studio, we'll know to put this in the contract. Do you remember things. we dealt with this the first time? We should have remembered it this time. Yeah. So we're ready to write a book, maybe yeah. next. By the third one, whatever it may be, we're going to be experts. One, two, one, two, one, two. The studio is on Stockdale Highway and it opened to the public this morning. Making news around the state this morning and authorities near Placer County say they have found a car and a body in the area where teams have been searching for a missing teenager. A volunteer search group Adventures with Purpose say they found the car with a body inside in Prosser Reservoir. Authorities have been searching for that area for 16 year old Keely Rodney for the past two weeks. Authorities have not confirmed that the remains are of Rodney, but several agencies, including the FBI, were out at the scene to investigate the dive team's findings. Rodney attended a party at the Tahoe National Forest earlier this month when she went missing. Officials say they'll hold a news conference later today. Representatives for the Rodney family say they would not comment until they've received communication from law enforcement. With United Farm Workers flags in hand, activists marched from Stockton to Lodi on Sunday. The march for the governor's signature will travel 335 miles in total over a three-week stretch. Those with the movement are demanding Governor Gavin Newsom sign Assembly Bill 2183, which, if signed, would protect farm workers' right to unionize. The iconic flag, often associated with Cesar Chavez, might be seen in dozens of towns throughout the week as marchers work their way to the capital. As each day has moved on, it's grown. We have about 25 core marchers that started in Delano and have been there the whole time. But, you know, we had probably a thousand people in Stockton to greet us yesterday. The march will end at the state capitol on Friday. Clock is ticking for the federal government to provide a redacted version of the affidavit used to justify a search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Public pressure for more information about Trump's legal troubles continues. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington with more. 
The Justice Department facing a Thursday deadline to submit a redacted version of the affidavit used to justify the search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. That's a really serious thing for the nation. Top Democrats argue releasing the document would jeopardize DOJ's investigation. This is not the time to be giving essentially the Trump lawyers a roadmap into how to intimidate witnesses or how to derail a legitimate investigation. Former President Trump and his allies want more information about the search released. Meanwhile, efforts to shed light on coordinated attempts to reverse the 2020 election results hit a roadblock after an appeals court put on hold Republican Senator Lindsey Graham's testimony scheduled for Tuesday. The reprieve allows Graham an opportunity to challenge the subpoena to testify. The question is, why is Senator Graham so hellbent on not testifying? GOP members claim Trump's legal troubles are politically motivated. There is a massive, massive disconnect between the priorities of politicians in Washington and the concerns of the American people. A new NBC News poll shows 57 percent of respondents say investigations of former President Trump should continue, including 21 percent of Republicans. I think it's a poisonous toxin that is spreading everywhere, dragging politics down. Topping the list of voters' concerns, threats to democracy, overtaking worries about the cost of living. The NBC News poll also shows that three quarters of voters say the country is headed in the wrong direction and a record 58 percent who say that America's best years are behind it. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. And staying in Washington, officials in D.C. are struggling as buses of migrants continue to arrive in the nation's capital week after week. The busing began in May when Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott first started chartering transportation to so-called sanctuary cities. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser says she's concerned about capacity issues as migrants are ending up in homeless shelters. Abel Nunez and his group, the Central American Resource Center, have been helping out as more migrants arrive, but say it's been hard as more migrants are coming in at a faster pace than they can handle. Really difficult. The funds have run out, so we can't send uh, people right away to their final destination. We have to remember the majority of people do not want to stay in the DMV. And Mayor Bowser also noted that FEMA has given aid groups a grant for aid. However, Nunez says it's not nearly enough. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nextar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.